Hi everyone, Kevin Benison here. I hear a lot of questions and confusion and misunderstanding and queries getting banded around about what is required with regards to carrying out our lifting operations, particularly regarding cranes. Now, the legal requirements that are laid down to us are not specific in terms of how we go about things. They set out the main overall requirement, the general requirement, then it's up to us as the lifting professionals to determine what is actually required to be put in place and done in order to comply with that law. So just to help break some things down, I'm going to do a series of videos this week on some of the requirements laid out by Lola and just a bit of an explanation on what they mean to us. So this is day one, video one, and today I'm going to cover appropriate supervision. So the Lifting Operations and Lifting Equipment Regulations, or LOLA 1998, Regulation 8, requires that every employer will ensure that every lifting operation involving lifting equipment is properly planned by a competent person, appropriately supervised and carried out in a safe manner. So in a later video, I will talk about the proper planning and that competent person. I'd just like to talk about appropriate supervision. And it is, as it specifies, that the supervision must be appropriate in accordance with the task that's been done, the lifting operation that's been carried out. And within the guidance to Lola, it also looks at things like the personnel that are being used, which is a major factor. Of course, as you can understand, if you're using inexperienced personnel, they're going to require greater supervision and indeed mentoring. Then, within British Standard 7121, which of course are our recommended codes of practice within the UK, BS 7121, Safe Use of Cranes, what it specifies in there is that the appointed person is to ensure that a crane supervisor is nominated or allocated to ensure that the lifting operation is carried out in accordance with the method statement and indeed to direct all personnel. So it clearly recommends that a crane supervisor needs to be allocated for the job. Then um, in terms of like the number of supervisors, who the supervisors are, their competence, this is where it becomes a little bit more grey. So it's important to bear in mind that there's always this balance of getting the job done and doing it safely. As I tend to say, to really guarantee safety, then it's really kind of doing no work. That absolutely guarantees safety and eliminates any risk. So it's about really looking at what measures are necessary to minimise risk and actually go on and get the job done. We could have umpteen personnel there overseeing, you know, one-on-one -on -one supervision. Is it really cost effective? Is it necessary? Well, in many cases it's not, but in some cases it may be. It's about assessing that. So let's be sensible and try and get on and make sure that we have appropriate supervision. So just a few points that I'm going to cover then. Well, an example of perhaps where it's not appropriate supervision, which I've come across. So on a site, I watched uh, Slinger and they were, the load was already mid-lift. I was doing an audit and the load was just about down and uh, it was a bundled load. The slinging, it was slung on single wrap with webbing slings. Now, if you're a slinger or a crane supervisor or uh, an experienced AP, you'll know, of course, that bundled loads must be double wrapped at all times. And I've done an article previously upon, you know, slinging uh, double bundled loads. Now, um, that was clear there that after I'd asked the slinger some questions, you know, and the safest thing to do at that point was to complete the lift, get the load landed. And after I asked the slinger some questions, it was clear that the slinger knew how to sling that load. But for some reason, it hadn't been slung in the safest way, in the best way, and indeed not a particularly big ask, not a difficult way. So in that case, it wasn't so much down to knowledge, it was more down to the attitude and maybe the culture of them being rushed or feeling they were rushed or just being lazy or whatever it was. But of course, had the supervisor been present and the supervision was appropriate, then that wouldn't have happened because the load would have then been slung correctly. 
So for that case, yes, you could ask questions about the slingers, but if a supervisor was there for those slingers, whatever reason led them to do that, then that appropriate supervision wouldn't have allowed that to happen, which potentially could have been a serious accident if uh, the load was to catch, for example. So in terms of the person who's actually uh, been nominated as supervisor or one of the supervisors, well, there's a lot of questions in the industry about who is suitable to go into some of these roles. Now, we'll talk later in a, in a later video about the appointed person. But with regards to the crane supervisor, for me, it's hugely, hugely important that a supervisor is pretty much trained from the ground up, if you like. None of this parachuting people in at supervisor level who haven't actually carried out lifting operations before. That's my personal view and my professional view indeed on my experiences as well. Simply because if you've got somebody that's slinging a load and the person that's supervising them slinging a load has never slung a load themselves, how can they be sure that that load has been slung correctly? So really, when it comes to supervision, my view is that the supervisor needs to be certainly at least at the level of knowledge and experience above the slinger so as to ensure that they can comfortably and adequately and appropriately supervise them in carrying out that task. Um, so another thing that, that we can consider is doubling up roles. Often people will say, well, the supervisor has got to do supervising only. Now, in some cases that may be necessary. If they've got a couple of lifts to look out for and supervise, then they're going to need to have their wits about them. And if they get caught up in doing a particular task, then they may not be able to provide appropriate supervision. So think about if the supervisor is actually carrying out any other roles, such as slinging loads, does that reduce their ability to actually supervise what's going on? Now, within the mobile crane industry, in the contract lifting, which is the largest part of my background, when it comes to the supervisor, often they will do much of the slinging as well. Now, in this case, most cases, they are very comfortable and familiar with the slinger that they have on the job, as well as the crane operator. They work for the same company. They're usually colleagues. And so, therefore, the crane supervisor, let's say if they're on the ground and they're slinging a load to send up to the roof, they already feel confident that the slinger signaler is going to be able to competently signal the crane to get the load to the final position. Now, often in those cases, if I was supervisor, then I may be slinging loads on the ground to send up. I can see that slung correctly. The supervisor, uh, the crane operator, sorry, is also there and they've got eyes on. So let's say I make a mistake as a supervisor. Watch. Okay, we all make mistakes, but you'd hope as a supervisor, then you're kind of beyond the mistakes that are likely to be made for the particular load you're lifting. But you've got the crane operator that can see as well, and uh, perhaps they can chip in if there's something incorrect. But generally, the supervisor is making sure the load is slung correctly on the ground. Then they send it up. Now, if you've got loads to come down, if it's basic loads, you can discuss that beforehand. And then, if it's anything more complex, what I used to do in many cases is I would go, give us a shout when we're about to do that load, and I'll come up and give you a hand. Come up and give you a hand, really what that meant was, come up, we'll clarify how it's to be slung, and make sure it's good. And then we can go from there. So if it's feasible, then certainly you can double up roles, but make sure it's not taken away from that appropriate supervision. And um, if in doubt, of course, about your supervision and how many supervisors you need. Seek advice. If you've got questions, make sure you get those questions answered before you then carry on. And think about this as well. This is something that's often overlooked. Good proactive organisations and companies and even individuals who are looking to work their way up the ladder or perhaps offer greater service to companies or maybe even become self-employed or start a company themselves, They'll always think that little bit ahead. Not so ahead that it ends up, you know, uh, that it's not cost effective and it's too, finan too much of a financial difficulty for the company. But just consider, can you think ahead and start getting things in places where you are playing a bigger game? If you want better contracts with better customers, higher value contracts, and indeed you want things to be, you've got your safety, which is proactive and going ahead of the game 
then get things in place ahead of time. Start planning on, okay, so we're looking to do this. These are the personnel we want in place, and we're going to have at least sufficient personnel to do that. So again, if you've got any questions on that, seek advice. We are here to help you too. So this is, again, as I say, just video one of a series of videos. I'm going to put one out each day this week, um, all on just lower topics and breaking that down a little bit. Any comments you have, just leave them in the box and make sure you're following us and subscribe. And then that way you're going to get access to the videos and any further content we put out. Other than that, have a fantastic day and safe lifting. Bye for now.